Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about knee or elbow method for identifying the best K value. In our previous classes, we discussed about K means clustering and K means plus plus. This is a continuation class. So please watch our previous classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. So coming to today's class, for understanding the elbow method or knee method, we will take an example and understand what's elbow method and how it is identifying the best K value. The example data set which we consider here is, this is our example data set. Hoping that this example data set we already used in our previous classes in identifying the K means clustering algorithm. So hoping that you already know about this data set. Uh, that's why we are moving on uh, uh, without explaining what this data set is. Uh, so we are taking this example as our data set. Uh, in this data set what we are doing here is uh, let's take k is equal to 1. What's that mean? k is equal to 1 means uh, we have to identify one cluster. Identifying one cluster means our entire data set belongs to one cluster. If you apply k means clustering on this data set, what happens here is uh, our entire data set belongs to one cluster and our, uh, our centroid value will come somewhere around here. This is the centroid value because uh, the mean value, we calculate the mean value as our centroid value. All the data points, mean points somewhere around here. Assume that this is the centroid which we got here. So what we do here in elbow method or knee method is uh, we have to calculate the sum of square distance of each and every data point. We have to calculate sum of square distance to nearest centroid. That is what Im very important to understand. We have to calculate the sum of square distance value to nearest centroid. What does that mean? Is sigma i is equal to 1 to n means all the data points, n data points are there. So we have to calculate the square distance xi minus nearest distance calculation square distance and we are squaring it that's why we call it as square distance we are summing all the distance values square distance values for all the data points we are summing all the values that's why we got the name sum of square distance to nearest centroid so here we are having only one centroid this is the nearest to all the data points so we calculate the distance this distance and square it and we have to calculate the next point distance to the centroid, square it and we like that we have to calculate the distance, square the distance values to all the points and sum, we have to sum them up. That is what we do and the value which we got after summing sum of squared distances, that value we, we use in our elbow method. Let's take the next one, k is equal to 2. For the same data set, if you take k is equal to 2, we have to identify two clusters in this data set. Assume that these are the clusters which formed by our, after applying k means clustering on this data set with k is equal to 2, assume that these are the centroids which we got after applying k means clustering algorithm. So this data belongs to one cluster and this data belongs to one cluster. Again calculate the sum of square distance from nearest centroid nearest centroid that point is very important nearest centroid what's that mean is uh, so these points are nearest to this centroid these points are nearest to this centroid so we will calculate distance to this centroid so what uh, so what we observed here in this two situations uh, as the k value increases What's happening here? As the k value increases, the distance also decreasing. As k value increases, number of clusters increases, the distance to sum of square distance to nearest centroid is decreasing. That is what we have to understand by looking at this two examples. Because usually this point is having previously, this point is having a distance of this. Now this point is having a distance of this. So the distance value is decreasing. As k value increases, k is equal to 3, what's happening here? Again, assume that after applying k means clustering with k is equal to 3 value, the centroids which we got here is C1, C2 and C3. These are the centroids. Assume that this is the one cluster and this is another cluster and this is the other cluster formed by applying k means 
clustering algorithm again we have to calculate the k, uh, sum of squared distance to the nearest centroid so again the distance decreases uh, previously the distance for these points are up to here here these points are having distance up to here now the centroid changed so the distance has been reduced so what we observed here as the k value increases the sum of squared distance is decreasing uh, as k is equal to 4 assume that after applying uh, it forms a cluster like this uh, and this one cluster and this is another cluster and this is another cluster c1 c2 c3 and c4 so we use this sum of squared distances and identify the best k value how we identify that best k value is uh, we will plot a graph like this uh, on the x axis we will take uh, k values 1 2 3 4 so on up to and uh, on the y axis we are taking a uh, sum of squared distances uh, and we will plot the sum of squared distances versus k value so our squared distances drastically reduces like this uh, at certain k value the sum of squared distance is gradually reducing it is not drastically reducing see here from here 1 to 3 it is drastically reducing from here onwards it is almost linear not not linear it is almost linear it is gradually slowly reducing so at this point this point we consider it as the best k value this is this is in the shape of elbow that's why we got the name elbow or knee method uh, this point is taken as the best k value why why we have chosen this as the best k value look at the diagrams here from here this is our first case by looking at this data set uh, we know that we discussed in this in our previous classes but looking at this data set uh, k is equal to 3 is the best k value but from here k is equal to 1 2 3 there is a drastical change in distances there is a drastical change in distances there is a drastical change in distances from here onwards if you further dividing if you are increasing the k value there is not much change in the distances that's why that is the reason why up to here up to the best k value we are having a drastical change in distances from here onwards we are having a small gradually slowly it's changing the distances value so if you increase the k value there is no much change in the sum of squared distance that is why we take k as the this is taken as the best k value so this is how we identify the best k value using a knee or elbow method there are so many methods in our next class we discuss the another method called silhot method so hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you